Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful large mountain painting, and it should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. I'm going to start today with our one inch brush, just a little bit of blue. No, well, maybe a little white. I was going to say nothing else, but now nah, just a little bit of white. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I've went ahead and put just a little bit of clear gel and white here at the top. It's something we don't normally spend a lot of time talking about, but don't skip it, it's important. The other thing you can see is I've got a nice pencil sketch because my mountains, my scene's just a little more, you know, complicated today than sometimes. It's so I'm going to just rely on my sketch, my little drawing a little bit more than, than on some other paintings. It just doesn't matter really. You can do whatever you need to do. It's just something that might help me. There you go. All right, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because we're gonna do little clouds in a second. Now today I'm gonna share a new tip for you. This is a shop towel, and I'm gonna use this instead of my paper towels to wipe down my sky. The reason? It doesn't leave the paper towel shavings. Yay. Now I can't take credit for this at all. Actually, one of my students showed it to me in a class that we did a couple weeks ago, and uh, I was really impressed. So up to this point, I've always used paper towels. It leaves these little shavings. You have to throw away your paper towel like every two minutes and get a new one. This, you don't have to. So now I'm just gonna blend that a little. So now we got a nice sky that's been wiped off and we are ready for clouds. So hopefully that tip helps you. I was just too excited about it to, to not share it with you. I gotta share it. All right, let's get some clouds in here. Nice, maybe a little more blue. This is. Not a big deal today, it's just kind of subtle clouds. We're gonna do lots of them, but they're not gonna be really too noticeable. They're just up here in the sky. I'm not adding a whole lot. There we go. See how you can roll them in and there's no mud because we wiped the canvas. And it's so clean, I don't have to worry about picking those little paper towel shavings out, which I normally do. I take a brush and I'll just wipe them out, but not today. <laughs> well, I know this looks tedious, but this is really the best way to do it. You see, I've got my little my little detail round brush. And I am very slowly painting and tedious. Okay, fine. <laughs> and tediously painting in these little cracks on the top of the mountain. See that? Because if you do this with any other brush, you'll get large, large things instead of small things. And we want the small things. And that is definitely a proper term, the small things. <laughs> All right, that looks pretty decent. Maybe, maybe make this a little taller right there. See how you can just really get in here. I, this is all dry, so put, your, put your hand right there if you want to, and just get in and, and do this sort of stuff to it. There we go. Mm, nice sharp cracks, I like that. I think that looks pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, now right up here. But you see how it looks more detailed? So anyway, obviously you won't, you won't get in here and paint the whole thing in like that. You'll change to a big brush. I'm just showing you how to get the, the top done. Now we're gonna go ahead and highlight this small mountain back here. You can see I just did the same idea, but there's a little more paint on this one. This one is really dry. I think this new shop towel thing is actually going to be even better for the painting itself. I mean, forget just the, um, forget just no shavings. I think I can press harder and I think I get the canvas even more dry. So we could be, we could be getting some more detail here, which is exciting. Okay, but just, just for those of you who maybe don't know, they come in a little roll like this, just so you know, in case you're not familiar with them. There, and yeah, I think you just get them at the hardware store. Cool, okay, so anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and keep just working on this little mountain. I've got my detail round. I'm gonna use it both straight in and flat to create some nice, some nice variation between different strokes. I like that now. Ah, I don't know, that's a little, that's a little straight for me, maybe over here. Let's go this way, just for some variety. There we go, nice. Not all of it is going to be snow, just only, only a bit. Cool. And then of course you got this big blank area. The worst thing you could do is get up here and just, you know, drag all the way down with this color. Instead, what you want to do is you want to get up in here and paint these little 
areas within the mountain. See that? That will make it look further away. That's important, don't skip that. Now I've changed to a filbert brush because I'm gonna paint some more trees and I've got really the same color. It's a little darker. And let me see here. Kind of just do a, a bit of a line. I like to just start like that and then, I mean, there's a zillion ways to paint these, as you know. I'm probably gonna do uh, fairly rugged evergreen trees because this is obviously a high elevation. And generally things tend to get kind of rugged at high elevations. So anyway, there you go. My brush is well used. Don't throw away your well used brushes because sometimes they work even better. And this is one of those cases, see that? That kind of makes it look a little more rugged. Sweet. Now we can make this even more interesting with the detail brush, but for now we're just kind of getting everything going with the filbert brush. It works out pretty good. There, I like that. Maybe skip a spot Ooh, right there. Skip a spot. Yeah. And just build in lots of trees. This whole area is going to be filled with trees. We're going to kind of have them drop down and then we'll, we'll pick it up. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. We'll pick it up down here with our rocks. There's going to be a lot of rocks today, so hope you're excited to see some rocks. <laughs> now I'm just continuing to paint in our rocks up here, and although it's a little more tedious, I'm doing it with a, continuing to do it with a filbert brush. There, and honestly, I think that just a couple extra minutes here will really pay off big time in just a, another couple minutes. <laughs> there you go. That looks pretty decent. See how I'm leaving it kind of rough? I like these brushed marks and brush strokes. And that's good. Makes it look like a detailed rock without even doing anything yet. See how you can also change the color a lot. That's super important. Good. Okay. And I decided to leave this just the way it was. I, I, after everything's in it, I kind of like it. Or everything's in around it. I mean, I like it. So we're going to leave it. There you go. All right. Maybe a little darker over here. I don't know. Add a little dark to this. Straighten up this edge. I kind of made that too blurry. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and brush in just a little bit of blue sky. I know we kind of did it out of order. Oops. <laughs> oh well. See the, the proper art way would have been to go ahead and do this first then paint your rocks around it. But you know what? It doesn't make a bit of difference, does it? Okay, it makes a small difference, but we'll just have to repair the top of the rocks, which is really no big deal to me. I think that's fine. Cool. There we go. Maybe just make it, I'm just trying to match the sky. I guess I don't want to make it, the sky's not all that dark, so we shouldn't really make it much darker than that. Okay, now the other thing, we're gonna go ahead and take some of this rock tone and pull this down because there's gonna be a lot of this reflected in the water. Ooh, I like that. Good, a little more white. Kind of show you my palette. I'm just getting some mud at this point. Just pick up some mud and throw it in the water. Nice. It might end up looking like a reflection of the rock or even the grass or whatever else we end up putting in, you know, on top of this. I just don't know yet because it's not there and things are always subject to change. So I'm just kind of, I'm guessing and we'll see how accurate my guess turns out. We can always, always add more to the reflection. Water is one of the easiest things to paint, at least while it's wet. <laughs> If you were to do this, you know, in acrylics, maybe it's a little trickier. It just depends. Certain things are easier in oil. Certain things are easier in acrylics. That's a hard question to answer when it, people ask me which one is better, you know, for a, a new painter. Oh, not, not an easy question to answer. Now let's go ahead and just drop on a little highlight to these trees in the background. I've got a pretty old detail round brush. And this one's mm, pretty much worn out. I've used it quite a long time. And... I've done a little bit of scrubbing with it, which doesn't exactly help it to last a long time. Anyway, rather than throwing it away, I'm going to use it to create a nice little texture back here. See that? I can just touch it. It's a very soft brush, even though it's kind of doesn't come to a point real good. Very soft brush. So it's, I just, I don't know. To me, it's just important to not get rid of your old brushes until you're sure they're really bad. And even then, I don't know. Maybe it's worth hanging on to them as long as you got the room to do it, you know. Yeah, it looks good. See how we're just developing a little bit of light in the background? We can change our color. 
I might just go with a little bit of, I don't know, just a little bit more green and white versus, you know, the green, yellow and white, just to get more of a cool note happening back here. There, if you have any trouble making this stick on without, in, you know, without becoming muddy, just take a towel and wipe it off. And the problem will be solved. <laughs> it's that easy. Let's see what we can do about maybe just getting yeah, an extra ridge line here. That's, that's interesting. We want to do a lot of interesting things. Now I'm kind of just standing around here picking out these little boulders. It's, I don't know, it's taken the past maybe five or six minutes just to throw in some detail here. Maybe a touch longer, but not much. There. I'm not really rushing it. You can see kind of working in little patches moving forward from the background to the foreground. It works out pretty good, doesn't it? Nice. See that? Just deliberate, quick brush strokes. Some of them are, you know, some of them are just one brush stroke and you're done. And some of them I kind of go back and I add some extra stuff too. But see how that begins to look like little rocks? There's not a great shortcut for this other than just painting them in, you know, sort of quickly one by one. You don't have to stand here and, you know, get frustrated painting all day just on these little rocks. That's not necessary. So just kind of, like I said, be deliberate with your brush strokes. Put them where it counts, one or two brush strokes and get right back, go somewhere else <laughs> like that. See that? You invest a few minutes and it'll look like you put in hours, but not really. You really didn't and people will think you did and it's gonna be cool. <laughs> Love it when we can do stuff like that. All right, let me see a little bit. I've got my blues here as well. We go a little bit of just up in here. Lots and lots of rocks today. See that? The more paint you put on, the harder it's going to be to highlight. So be pretty careful. Don't want to. Don't want to have an issue. Nice. <laughs> Fun. All right. And then of course we can, well, I was really using the same brush, let me wipe it out. We can also just simply come in here and just touch and create a little suggestion of grass. Not much grass today though, mostly rocks. It helps to kind of seat the rocks a little though. And if you get tired of painting them, you can do a little more grass. <laughs> How's that? Now I've got a nice dark blue and I'm kind of, I was gonna say highlighting, kind of shading this rock here. I just threw some color down real quick. But this one's important because this is our big foreground rock. It's important that you have a lot of variety of color in here. And it's also important, obviously, that it's nice and large because those things will help bring it forward. You see, we've got a big, big rock back here. That's a huge rock. But look, there's gray tones and there's very light blues and then the highlight's pretty subtle. Now on this, and there's not so many color changes. And on this one, see I've got some purple, some red. I'm gonna put some more colors there in a minute. I'm going to do a lot more to the blue and it's going to be a lot more vivid and dark. See that? This is so important. You can put some color like even red and purple even in the shadow area. That might be good. All right. And make sure your darks are black. So I really wanted to kind of just show you how, how I'm trying to get some depth here because that's important when you're doing just a bunch of the same thing. Sometimes creating a little bit of depth in there can be an issue. So make sure that you get enough contrast in different colors because that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to do it. Yeah. See how that's starting to come to life a little more. Wrap, see, you can wrap these around as well. So you have a little bit of a less harsh transition. Of course, we're starting to build up quite a few layers of paint. So that gets pretty difficult to do there. So don't do it too much. You might get mud. I'm just going to take some yellow and just some random colors and just kind of touch them here and there. And then I'll work them in. But this will at least kind of get us a, a nice little foreground rock with a lot of color. Probably want to do a lot of this to that one up there as well. Nice. The grass down here will be pretty big. That'll help with that effect as well. Get us a little extra depth. Now I'm finally going to go ahead and paint in this tree. It's a little odd that I kind of left it blank. I don't know. Usually I like to get the canvas covered, but I just have been so distracted doing other fun things. Well, anyway, finally getting to it. You know what? Was that my old pencil? I think I see my old pencil line right there. Cool. 
<laughs> That's been a little while since we've used that, hasn't it? I like that. See, what this is going to do is help to frame in the painting. Hopefully not in a way that's, you know, that's weird. Hopefully in a way that looks good. There. And I think that in order to make it look good instead of weird is having this kind of natural angle in is kind of nice. And then on this one, maybe, maybe a little less, you know, just some variety. I don't know. You just don't want to, don't want to frame it in in such a way that just looks a little too planned. I guess that's what I mean to say. So anyway, this is good. And because this is the first layer of paint, oh boy, look at this. This is going to be nice and dark and it's going to be so easy to highlight. You're going to get some amazing highlights on this thing. <laughs> Looks like I didn't plan around this very well. That's all right. We can always bring the background in. Now let's go ahead and work on these little trees. We're not going to do too much because they're not really the point of the painting. Oh, there we go. It's actually a little darker, isn't it? Because the rocks and kind of this foreground area, this is more of the, more of the reason, you know, to enjoy looking at the painting. It's not so much the, the trees. The trees are just kind of here. So I'll just spend only a few minutes putting a little bit of highlight to them. I might brighten up maybe these two middle ones, maybe those, I don't know, but I certainly won't go crazy with them. How's that? There, that looks pretty good. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I floated just a touch of mist back in here. Not much, actually I did a little back there. Very delicately. There, and I think that just adds a little bit more um, softness to the painting, which we were kind of lacking in that area. There, but there's very little paint back here, so you can almost just stroke this right on without any issue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop on some some detail to these trees up here. We're not gonna need a whole lot, just a bit. We didn't use a whole lot of paint in the sky, so it's not mixing a lot. Just a little, <laughs> not bad. All right, maybe lighten that up. Just put a little more yellow into it. I don't know, just change it up some. In fact, those trunks are looking awfully, uh, awfully light to me. Speaking of changing it up, let me grab a little bit of, a little bit of brown and black. I'm just gonna darken these. So this is how you kind of go. You know, you, you see something you don't like, you stop and change it. You're not locked in. There. Kind of darken those up just a little. That's nice. I don't know, it's just something I saw. All right, back to this. There we go. I want these pretty thick on the top. And we're not going to go just with that. It's probably not even the right brush to start with. Let's, let's go back to the detail round in a minute. But I'm going to grab my filbert brush. There we go. Get this done a whole lot faster so we're not here all day. Just doing this. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and then I'll, of course, add the detail round brush back over this to create two different textures in the tree. Very, very important. All right, this is an evergreen tree, so it does need to be bigger at the bottom, probably. Oh, crossed right over that mountain. Overlap, that's a good thing. Now, one of the last things that we're going to do to this painting is add in a lot of grass and detail. This is one of those paintings that really could benefit from it. Lots of detail. See that? Then we'll kind of get an idea of how bright we need to go with, you know, maybe if we need to touch in an accent highlight or two. I mean, this tree is still unfinished. I got to just give it a couple more minutes of work on that one. But just wanted to get the grass in just to give me a little, a little break from doing it, that sort of stuff. It also just helps me to kind of feel out how much further we need to go. It looks good though, doesn't it? I like that. We can add limbs and stuff, which are always look nice. We'll do that maybe with just a light maybe not light but mid-tone brown would be perfect let's do that just get a, a nice little brown color and then maybe especially up in here don't get too much of this thin paint up here because then that would make highlighting almost impossible but just here and there drop a few branches in oh yeah looks nice and maybe just a I don't know a dead tree or two out of this clump over here how fun I like that I just think that all looks pretty nice okay some more grasses with the darks and I'll just play around with this painting for a few more minutes all right well I think we're done I had a lot of fun I hope you did too don't forget to check out our website DVDs and brush line thanks for watching